Hi, welcome to Voices. I am your host, Keith Major. The year was 1968. A young dashing prince came to be the principal of Bahamas Academy. He replaced the ever popular Mr. Roach. Big shoes to fill. I was a student at Bahamas Academy on that day. Fast forward, 2008. He had done well. He was having his retirement. In his own humble style, he did not want a banquet. He wanted a concert. I was singing in that concert for his retirement. This man is present in studio today. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest, Pastor Dr. John Kerry. Dr. Kerry, welcome to the program. Thank you. Pleased to be here. Yes. Dr. Kerry, you have retired now uh, well, five, six years. How's, that, how's it going? Well, it's going well. Um, the transition from work to retirement was smooth. Uh, in fact, uh, I retired from my main occupation with mm -hmm. the South Bahamas Conference, mm -hmm. but I continued for the next three years as director of education for the North Bahamas Conference. Oh, okay. So it was not that um, void right, between right. the main retirement and my mm -hmm. finally mm -hmm. uh, giving up those responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So you were, you retired, but still busy. Right. right. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I kid folk sometimes uh -huh. to say, my salary has been retired, but I'm still working. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the world of volunteerism. Yes. Uh, Dr. Carey, we, we I opened this program, I talk about 1968, but you have a history prior to that. Because I remember you as a, I was a little boy in the very old Grandstown Church. And I remember that uh, I'm about to go to school and mm -hmm. uh, you're bringing short pants yes. with, instead of zippers, but buttons, you're bringing oh, them yes. uh, uh, for my mother. Mm -hmm. uh, you, were, you were a tailor, an accomplished tailor, is that so? That's right. Mm -hmm. I worked for a number of years. Mm -hmm at a place called High Class Tailoring on King Street. Okay. Building right next to the Cathedral Church mm -hmm. with uh, Mr. H.A. Lunn. Okay. Uh, we did sewing for tourists and mm -hmm. for the upper crust, uh, mm -hmm. governor and uh, those folk and the Bay Street men. All right, uh, all right. I, I, I should never forget uh, a trousers I used to make for one, I wouldn't call his name person, was yeah. 52 in the waist. Back then? Back then. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh -huh. some good years. Some good years. Yes. Yeah. Well, well, Dr. Kerry, you, you, you weren't only a tailor. You worked for the Ministry of Education? That's right. Tell us a little bit about Board that. of Education in those days. Mm -hmm. I started in 1958 mm -hmm. uh, as a student teacher okay. and completed the routine and ended up as an assistant teacher. Uh, the Eastern, I started Eastern Junior uh -huh. and for the first two years and then transferred to Eastern Senior okay. in charge of the PE program okay. uh, at the, for the entire school. Mm -hmm. I, I think we had about 900 students wow. to deal with and I had eight periods a day in eight. the yard in those days, <laughs> no gym. <laughs> Lots of sun. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> wow. And you've taught some prominent people, some people who have done oh, well yes. oh, yes. with your students back then. Oh, yes. uh, among them, we have uh, Hawk Finlayson. I think okay. I'll fuse Hawk Finlayson, yes. Right. One of my outstanding okay. students. Okay, yes, Hawk yes. has done well. Mm -hmm. uh, great, great, great. Back then, there were only three major schools, Southern, that's, that's right. Western, and Eastern. Eastern. All of which weren't too far from each other. That's right. But then, you, like you say, there was no South. Eh? It was only Bush. Right. right. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, Dr. Kerry, let's, 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 let's move on. You, you then left uh, the Bahamas mm -hmm. uh, to further your education. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. Where did you go? Mm -hmm. In 1963, uh, I might say before I, I left, mm -hmm. I had opportunity to go to England to do a course in PE. Okay. When I went for an interview with the Minister of the uh, Board of Education those days, they told me I would have to do extra classes on Saturday. Right. So because of that, I didn't accept it and oh. went to the States instead. All right. 
-hmm. Yes, yeah, so I, I went to Oakwood College in Huntsville, Huntsville Alabama. Mm -hmm. uh, in those days, a uh, small college, mm -hmm. but uh, very accommodating because I didn't have any money. Okay. I only had $500. Wow. And mm -hmm. so I had to work. All right. I worked in the laundry, washing, mm -hmm. um, four hours a day. And uh, during the summers, I canvas, for those who don't know what that means, selling books. Okay. During the summers in North Carolina for the first two summers, and then a summer in Louisiana, uh, Texas, and then in Canada, British Columbia. Okay. So, Doc, you didn't come home at Christmas or summers? Couldn't afford it. Right. Couldn't afford to come home. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I drove down to Miami, where my mm -hmm. mother was, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't come to the Bahamas until I was, th in fact, I didn't come to the Bahamas until I was finished my master's. And where did you do your master's? At Andrews University. Oh, okay. Yes. And your master's was in? Education. Ed All right. My bachelor's was in English and mm -hmm. master's in teaching English. Oh, okay, okay. And when you, when you received your initial call to, to the then Bahamas mission, I would right, guess, right. You, you, the call uh, was to be principal? That's right. I was uh -huh. at Andrews then in my final mm -hmm. year, and uh, I accepted the call. It came through the general conference, uh -huh. and I accepted the call. All right. And I went back the summer to complete my master's. Okay, okay. So tell us a little bit about Bahamas Academy. You come in, uh, as I noted earlier, uh, you, you are to fill the shoes of the very popular uh, Mr. Shoes, Hugh Roach. Large shoes, indeed. Uh, uh, yes. In fact, uh, uh -huh. the... the, the President of the PTA, when I first met, met him, said, boy, says, big shoes you have to fill. I don't yes. know how you're going to do it. Uh -huh, uh -huh, but uh -huh. the Lord was with me, and I didn't really fill his shoes, but I, I did my own thing. You, you did well, sir. Yes. You did well. Yes. You, you, how long were you at Bahamas Academy? Uh, Ten years. Ten years. 68 to 78. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, you were at Bahamas Academy, and then there was this transition into into ministry. How did that happen? Uh, your call okay. in ministry? Um, when I was at Oakwood, mm -hmm. um, I lived in an area of the dorm called the Vatican. Okay. <laughs> That's where the ministerial students live. All right. And everybody thought that I was a ministerial student because I usually hang around with them. Uh -huh. And that sort of uh, followed me uh, when I came home. And when I became principal, after a while, the brethren said, well, we'd like for you to come into ministry. What about it? I said, no, I don't feel that I'm called to that. Mm -hmm. So I kept putting it off for years mm -hmm. until after I had served at Western East College uh, for three years and then gone on, finished my doctorate and came back. Uh, they approached me again. Mm -hmm. uh, so I said, well, I discussed it with my wife. I said, if the Lord is calling me, he's using these men to indicate that this is the way I ought to go. Mm -hmm. And so I finally accepted to be what part year of the ministry. Oh, I don't remember the right. exact year. When did you, when did you go to West Indies College, Northern Caribbean, you, for that stint there? Yes, what? 78. This Se oh, when August, you left Mahomes Academy? Yeah, August 78, uh -huh. I went to, to West Indies College as chairman of the education department. Okay, all right. And uh, mm -hmm. served there, and I also served as chair of the division of education. Mm -hmm. And the last year I served as dean of students, in addition to uh, education department chairman. Oh, okay, you've, you've, so you've, you've had some high, some high level uh, positions. It's a learning experience. Yes. Uh, I, I think I, I, I grew a lot during mm -hmm. that time mm -hmm. uh, in West Indies College. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And then you, after, after you left West Indies College, now Northern Caribbean University, I what did you do? I decided I needed to finish my doctorate. Okay. And so I, we came home and I went off to Andrews to complete my doctorate. Andrews University. Andrews University. And your doctorate is in? Education Administration. Education Administration. Yes. All right. So you complete your doctorate, you're back home. Yes. And uh, you got all these high-ranking titles and... 
and all this awesome experience for the area of education, and they ask you to come and be a preacher. Well, I first, I uh -huh. came as education director. Education director, okay. Education director. Mm -hmm. In addition to other departmental, mm -hmm. uh, like Sabbath school, or lay activities, mm -hmm. and several other areas, health and temperance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But education director was my main uh, portfolio. Mm -hmm. And I served in that area for about 10 years. Okay. And decided, well, I needed a change. Somebody else needed to come right. and give direction. And I think it was at the end of that time that I was called into ministry. Okay. And uh -huh. uh, after a break for about, uh, I think, four or so years, then I was called back into uh, as de director of education. All right. And uh, totally, I, I served about 20 years as director of education. About how many years? About 20 years. 20 years, yeah. yeah. But you were still pastoring still at the pastoring, same time. Still pastoring, still pastoring, departmental director, uh -huh, uh -huh. doing a lot of things. Okay. Well, let's, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about your, your pastoral life. And, okay. and how it compare mm -hmm. or differed uh, with, with, with education. Um, what are some of the churches, first of all, you pastored, pastored uh, at, and what are some of the experiences? I started at the um, Philadelphia Church. Um, that church was formed, I think, in 1989, I believe, out of the crusade mm -hmm. uh, that was held by Martin Burrow. Okay. And we worshiped in the academy. And I was... Uh, appointed um, first elder All right. in those days. Mm -hmm. And uh, I worked with the church. We had several pastors during mm -hmm. the first two years. We, my, our first pastor was Pastor Paul Scavella. Okay. So I was his first elder. Okay, all uh, right, all right. We worked together. Mm -hmm. and in fact, uh, we were ordained together in 1991. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. yeah. So I worked with the church for about two years as elder, and then when, uh, after a while, they felt that I ought to come into ministry, mm -hmm. and uh, I was appointed uh, pastor of that church. Of the Philadelphia church? Yeah, after Pastor Johnson left. Okay, okay. I succeeded him. All right. So the, uh -huh. And did you the, serve in other churches, any other churches as Yes, uh, I served as pastor of the Ephesus Church a little later on. New Englishton, mm -hmm. an assistant at Grantstown. Also, I served as a pastor of the North Andrews District, uh, Inagua uh, uh, District, and um, uh, Crooked Island. Crooked Island, yeah, okay. Those, those areas. All right. Mm -hmm. um, any major differences between pastoring and teaching? Yes. Uh, the major difference is uh, in teaching, uh, you more restrict it uh, to time and place, whereas in pastoring, you, you move around, you're always see, moving. Yeah. Okay. Uh, doc, uh, Dr. Carey, we've come to a, a break point in our program. Uh, when we come, we're going to break, and when we come back, we're going to talk just a little bit more about pastoring for his, for his teaching, and we want to get into... Your, your glorious years of retirement and the rest of your, it's, it, it's a lot of exciting uh, stuff. And so we'll be back in a short while. That calls me from From a world of care And it bids me yet My father's throne Make all my wants And my wishes known Welcome back. The program you are watching is Voices. I am your host, Keith Major, and our very, very special guest is retired uh, minister, educator, and current volunteer, worker, busy man, 
as Dr. John Kerry. Dr. Kerry, well, when we last spoke, when we spoke, were speaking shortly or a short while ago, we were talking about uh, church. But I want to go back to 1968, 69. You come into Bahamas Academy. I was in Form 4. I think it was my third year in Form 4 then. I was in Form 4. Uh, you came in, here's this young person trying to get his feet wet. Everybody sees this young, eligible man. And then you come back the next year uh, with your young, dashing bride, I believe, yeah. Shazara. Uh, mm -hmm. You are teaching there. She is teaching there. Uh, I don't know if it was any other husband or wife team. I can't remember. But, uh, but I do, re I do, re I do recall you coming back with a wife. And when you were there the first year, we didn't see you as a person who, who took the time to court anyone. Yes, so you yes. caught us all by surprise. Sir. Yes. Tell us about that in your family. Well, well, it all started at college. Okay. At Oakwood College. Mm -hmm. That's where we met. And uh, when I went to Andrews, I left her there. Mm -hmm. And she finished in uh, 69. We, we, and that's the year we got married, that summer. Okay. Uh, 24th of August, mm -hmm. 1969 in Miami. We mm -hmm. got married in Miami. Okay. Pastor mm -hmm. McKinney came over to, to, to do us, yes. Mm -hmm. And then we came home. <laughs> I, 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 we were living on a shoestring budget. <laughs> uh, uh, we, uh -huh. we started out in Fox Hill. Okay. And uh -huh. uh, Mika facilities. Yes, yes. I won't go into the details. But right, right, right. <laughs> right. Um, and, um, but both of you were teaching at Bahamas Academy, yes, right? Yes, uh -huh. yes. It's good to have an ally there to find out what teachers are saying in the, yeah, she, in, the, in the room. How am I looking and that sort of a thing? Uh, interestingly, she didn't pay too much attention to those kinds of things. Oh, okay. She tried to mm -hmm. keep uh, neutral. Uh, okay. But she uh, taught in science department. Science, yes. And uh, uh, after a, a while, uh, she felt I was putting too much pressure on her, so she decided to go elsewhere. Uh, yeah, well, a smart lady, smart lady. <laughs> yeah. And you have, uh, you, you, you have two, two children? Yes. Uh, yes. John and, uh, and... First, I'm first. Uh -huh. Next one is second and the third, third John. First, second, and third Wait, John. Wait a second. All, all, all are named John? John? That's right. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Well, they have all the names. Uh, yes. Gerald, the yes. older boy. Yeah, we call Garfield, the uh -huh. second boy. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that, is, that is interesting. And uh, they're all doing well. They're all doing well. Uh, one is well. uh, an engineer, I think. Is yes. It? Uh, and, and he's the, in the Cayman Islands. Yeah. And the other is an architect in, in Atlanta. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. All both, right. Both married. Okay, so how many grandkids do you have? Uh, four. One girl with uh -huh. the one in uh, Atlanta and mm -hmm. three boys with the other one in um, Cayman. Beautiful. God has blessed you. Oh, yes. Dr. Kerry, let's get back to past pastoring. Uh, you, were, you spent a lot of time at the Philadelphia Church. Yes. You, you probably had a lot to do with the formation of that. Tell us a little bit about yes. how it came to being. It, it came out of a crusade in, in 1989. Mm -hmm. I Martin Burrow, and we started out in the academy, mm -hmm. in the main auditorium there. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was first elder. Okay. Uh, we had a, a good group that uh, worshipped there. Then we, we had, uh, I think, Pastor Paul Squella was our mm -hmm. first pastor. Mm -hmm. Very dynamic, energetic pastor, mm -hmm. but he decided to get married. Okay. <laughs> and so they transferred him to another district. All right. And then we had a, another pack about three or four pastors in the interim in a short time after mm -hmm. that. And Pastor Johnson, I think, was the last one in that mm -hmm. area before we moved to uh, the current location mm -hmm. in um, Elizabeth Estate. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor Johnson drew the plan for that building. Okay. Where we are now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we cleared off the lot and pitched the tent, right. and I conducted a crusade under the tent, and we were under the tent for about you a year. You were the speaker oh, at yes. the crusade? Oh, yes. Okay, all right. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, we, we really you, had a... You were under the tent for a year for afterwards? For a year. So okay. Was, while we were building mm -hmm. the church, we built the fellowship hall first, mm -hmm. and when the fellowship hall was finished, then we moved into the fellowship hall. Okay, all right. And at that point, I was transferred. Mm -hmm. uh, to the New Anderson Church, 
I think Pastor mm -hmm. Hannah took over mm -hmm. and completed the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there, from New England, I went to Grandstown to assist Pastor Johnson. Okay. And uh, I must have liked that to him. Oh yes. He was pre he, that was prior to him being president. Right, right. Yeah. But he was mm -hmm. the pastor of the church there. Then I, I think I went full time into departmental work, mm -hmm. and then later on I was given the Ephesus Church, and uh, then in addition, uh, after a while I had the Crooked Island District. Well, that was my Right. Last district, mm -hmm. uh, the North Andes district, and the uh, Inagua district, where I went out from time to time. Mm -hmm. uh, we organized speakers when I wasn't able to go mm -hmm. to take care of those districts. Mm -hmm. How do these churches differ, Doc? Or, or are they all the same? You just follow the each, same sermons, the same. No, each church has its own character. Okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, some are more vibrant than others. Right. Some are more, um, uh, how shall I put it, uh, hands-on. Okay. Others can handle themselves mm -hmm. more easily. Okay. But okay. they all have their own character. All right. And you currently, you currently reside with the Philadelphia Church? Yeah, that's my home church. And it's yes. nearest where I live. Okay. And I thought uh, it doesn't make sense for me to go mm -hmm. somewhere else when I can easily go there. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's where I'm now. Yeah. I'm serving as the stewardship uh, director oh. for the, the church. Okay, mm -hmm. great, great, great. Yeah. Uh, Doc, you had, in your illustrious career, um, or I think it's before you retired, I'm not sure, but you had a major illness. Yes, um, yes, um, yes. Can yes. we talk about that a little sure, bit? Sure, sure. Uh, what happened and how did you get out of that? And what yes, yeah. uh, in... 2005, I think it was, mm -hmm. um, I had what is called a herniated disc, mm -hmm. about this seven, six, and fifth vertebrae mm -hmm. uh, fractured, uh, excruciating pain. Wow. And uh, so I, my son thought I need to go to Miami, he took mm -hmm. me to Miami, and uh, at the um, Baptist Hospital mm -hmm. and had the operation. Uh, I was hospitalized, I think, for about a, a couple of weeks. Wow. And uh, then I was out of commission, uh, uh, to say, for about four months. Wow. Okay. I had to wear a brace. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, mm -hmm. I had my thyroid removed. Mm. Um, they would have removed it, but they felt because of the operation, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be able to maneuver my neck at mm -hmm. the time. So mm -hmm. it was after that I had my thyroid. Sounds removed. like you're talking about a car, Doc. Oh, Not I a human being. But yes, anyway, go yes. ahead. Mm -hmm. um, but the Lord was good, mm -hmm. and I was able to bounce back. Beautiful. And has been feeling pretty good. Right. Now, but didn't you have a sort of a. Relapse. Yes. Yeah, three years ago. Yeah. Three years ago. And you decided you're not going through that no more. Right. I decided I was going to go through it. Okay. I, in fact, I went to the doctor right, right here and well, signed up for the surgery. Right. Booked the room and everything. Uh huh. But then I, I had contact with somebody in the Relief Corporation. Tell us a briefly bit, bit about it. They don't want us to advertise on this program, dog. Yeah, but but, it, but you it, have a great story. It, uh, what did this do? It, you know, I'm a real. I want everybody to know yes. I'm a relive guy. Yes. Anyway, go, Doc. It um, helped me tremendously. I I wasn't too concerned about it at mm -hmm. first, but I said anything will help. I was yes. in so much pain, mm -hmm. and after about a month or so of using it, mm -hmm. all the pain disappeared. You're kidding? Yeah. And this has been going on how many years now? Three years. And in yes. addition to that, you. An opportunity was afforded you to bring the whole thing here. Yes. And I think you've done extremely well. Yes, in yes. That. We've, we've been able to help a lot of folk. Okay, uh, including folk. me, Doc. Yes, you know, that's yes, right. yes. Some people might not think I've been helped, but I've been helped. It's a lot of really, really good. good. Uh -huh. good. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Doc, let's talk. You, you are the coordinator of the GMCI, which is, which oh. is a, a product coming, I mean, uh, sorry, which is an, an initiative 
uh, in its in its early stages. Um, you're coordinator of that. You are you are you were voted as president of the retires association. Mm -hmm. uh, people just won't leave you alone, Doc. <laughs> and, I, and I believe it's because of your humble spirit. I, I do want to mention that uh, you have that spirit, uh, like Daniel, an excellent spirit. And I, and I think that is that. Um, but let, tell me a little bit, the retiree association, why do we need a retirees association? Okay. Good, Aren't you good, all good, good living question. well, going into the beach, good lots of money, no no problems? Don't, isn't that, that, that what's sounds happening? That sounds good. <laughs> Why do you need an association, though? Um, it comes out of the, the interest and concern of our president, Pastor Paul Scavella. Mm -hmm. uh, he felt that um, we weren't doing enough for retirees. Okay. Many times retirees feel that well, they put on the scrap even okay. nothing. So he felt that we need mm -hmm. to do something right. to get them into, not necessarily the mainstream, mm -hmm. but to get them into mm -hmm. circulation again. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to, to take care of their needs uh, as far as their physical need, if they need help, whatever mm -hmm. respect, mm -hmm. we, we are there to help them, give them advice, mm -hmm. counsel regarding any situation that might arise. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a fellowship group, mm -hmm. it's a spiritual encouragement group, mm -hmm. it's an all around help for the retirees mm -hmm. so that they know that somebody is concerned about them and they're mm -hmm. not alone. Mm -hmm. uh, as part of this, we have uh, what is called a prayer meeting uh, service that we are taking around to all the churches the third Wednesday in each mm -hmm. month, mm -hmm. uh, this coming Wednesday, Oh, we are taking it to the um, Good News Church. Mm -hmm. We started with Philadelphia. Uh, and so we are trying to do something that will make retirees feel that they are a part mm -hmm. of what's going on. Yes. Notwithstanding that, Doc, my time is gone, but I'm sure there are issues because a lot of retirees, either the wife is sick or the husband mm -hmm. is sick, and, and uh, the other one doesn't have the, the mobility, they have the other one. Uh, there are financial problems with, mm -hmm. with others. There's that of loneliness. There are there there, there I'm sure there's a there, there are a lot of needs for this for this. For this. Oh, we, yes. we can talk there, about this all. There are myriads of needs. Yes, uh, and we, we just wish that we were able to cater all of yes. them. We we're just barely touching the surface right now, but we hope we can do more right. as, to, as we go. Well, Dr. Kerry, your life has spoken to a lot of us. Uh, we, we, we 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 like the life you live. Uh, but if you had to say something to any audience right now, young ones coming up, retirees, anybody, if you had a message to say to anybody right now, and I gave you 30 seconds, what would you say? I, I would say especially to the young pastors who are the up and coming leaders in our church that they ought to make prayer the priority in their lives. Yes. Develop a prayer life, mm -hmm. be respectful particularly of the older persons in their uh, churches, mm -hmm. and uh, the Lord will help them to be successful. Right. Yeah. Great. So there you have it. Great advice, Dr. Kerry. And uh, thank you very much for the interview. And uh, as I indicated earlier, I, I, I was there when it started, and uh, I was there kind of when it ended. Uh, uh, and I, I, I'm still kind of here, Dr. Kerry. All right. I, 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 I think good things happen when somebody's around you. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure having you uh, watch this program. I want to thank my guest, Dr. Kerry. Thank you very much for, for, being, for being here. And again, for the, the example you have led and, uh, in your life and you continue, you continue to lead. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. It's Voices uh, on our program. We're going to do a two-part over the next couple of weeks on the latest ministry. Some call it disability, others call it special needs ministry. The Inter-American Division is so focused on this that they have had a major seminar and we're gonna to talk to you about it. It is a lot of things we have to do. It's been my pleasure, thanks for watching.